So Phil just won the PGA Championship. It's the longest golf course in major championship history, and it was won by the oldest major champion in history, almost 51 years old. We're going to show you something in Phil Swing that you're absolutely going to want to adopt and add to your swing. We're going to show you a whole lot of examples on how you can hit more of those, what does he say? Hellacious, Hellacious seeds. seeds. <laughs> All right, so we got this swing from Phil's Instagram channel, and he's gotten a lot of critiques and criticisms over the years for his swing because a lot, probably because of where he hits the ball sometimes. Yeah. Right? Not, yeah. I don't think he's going to argue that he's not the most accurate driver on the planet. But one thing he does in his golf swing is something that we can all learn from and it's something that we've both been working on actually this off season to, to improve in our own games. And we'll take you down here to when the shaft is parallel in the downswing. And this is a great place to look. One, where are your hands located at this point? Right? Mm -hmm. We see all the time, we'll see golfers with their hands kind of back in here while the shaft is is way back off the body right there. And and he's in a classic tour player position with his hands touching that lead thigh. Yeah. Right, his case pretty much on the lead thigh with that shaft parallel to the ground. Yeah, and, and there's a window in there, but uh, you definitely don't want to be where Mike showed the the one that's casted kind of early and, <laughs> right. and everybody's seen that before. But, yeah, that's that classic position, hands on the trail thigh, getting ready to for the last part here, which is what we're about to show you. Yeah, the, the important part. So – when we roll him into impact now, I actually let's put a little, kind of put a little circle here around his hands. And as we roll him into impact, okay, again, all the classic things you see from a tour player. Shaft lean, hands up now. They've gone from the back leg to the front leg. Mm -hmm. Okay? All very good. And this is not a flip. This is not a any kind of a goofy type release, right? Yeah. Pretty, Just won the PGA. <laughs> pretty Hall of Famous, right? Yeah. But what you're going to see right here, and it's, it's kind of fuzzy video, but right here, this shaft is pretty much vertical. You go right you down see. the middle of that shaft. You can kind Arm, of, yeah. hand, shaft, everything. And we call that lined up. Mm -hmm. right? So he's lined it up. And then very soon after that, really right kind of in here, he now has this shaft, and I'll do a different color now has his shaft pointing back to the middle of his body. And it's that, from this position here, to lined up, to that shaft pointing back, is something that we see every great player do, and it's something that we see 99% of our amateur golfers that come see us try not to do. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an epidemic, and it... You know, it, a lot of it stems from them trying to fix impact by fixing impact, mm -hmm. which we know is not the way to do it. It's almost always something that comes before. But they've they put themselves in such a bad spot that the only way they can even resemble something like this is to hold on to everything. Right. And once we get people in lessons, we do it all the time. With some of, we even showed on some of our YouTube videos lately is once we get them in a good spot and the sequence gets better, we actually have to teach them to almost throw it. Because the way they were trying to hold it, they would miss the ball completely. Now that's a great point because in our, in our live lesson that we did with Ryan, the um, how to learn to unlearn. unlearn to lean the shaft correctly, we had a lot of comments on the BB. And what you were saying basically in the BB with the lesson is, let's say you've got like a BB that's down here in the grip side of the shaft. It's free in the shaft. You'd hear it if you zzz, zzz, yeah, tip the shaft. Yeah, you've seen those things when you're a kid. You have that uh, little toy that does mm -hmm. that. So he's got that BB at the top part of his shaft. He's now slinging that BB out the bottom of the shaft. And it happens quick. And it happens quick. You can't do that if you're trying to drive and hold and just kind of maintain that kind of, you know, everybody calls it lag, maintain that wrist angle. Because, one, you'll miss the ball if you do that. And, two, it, it's going to slow the club down. Like, there's a tremendous amount of speed in this release. If you want to hit the ball high and far, in, in the modern game, obviously the courses are getting longer and yes. the greens are rock hard. Yes. You have to hit the ball high up in the air with your longer irons especially, right? Mm -hmm. So they can stop on the green. And the only way to do it is to let this club line up at impact. You can't be holding things off if, A, you want club head speed, and, B, you want to present some loft at impact to get the ball up in the air. To get in the air, exactly right. This is what all these great players do. So we're going to 
keep this in mind, all right? Because, you know, it should be fresh in your mind from the PGA Championships. You saw this, not with just Phil, but many players in the field, probably all the players in the field, actually. Now we're going to take you through a series of gear swings and show you exactly from different style of players, different height, different release patterns, how it all looks in the real world with these great golfers and how they actually do this. All right, so what you're looking at here on the screen, and we'll kind of explain everything that you're seeing. So we got our golfer here, and we're showing him down basically kind of but just above the waist and lower. And then we've got a clock face kind of imposed on top of him. So you can see, you know, it helps from this face-on view to kind of visualize things, to put a measurement, a loose measurement on it for just the clock face, right? Yeah. So at the bottom of the face down here is obviously 6 o'clock. To the right of that's five o'clock, and then to the left of that it's obviously uh, seven o'clock. So, the first group of golfers that we're going to look at are golfers with a lot of club head speed. These guys are all over 120 miles an hour with their driver. So we're going to denote that by our little rocket ship here. When you see a trophy, that means there is at least one win. Most of these guys have multiple wins. And then if you see the flags there, these guys are either Presidents Cup or Ryder Cup members. So we're showing you some very very good golfers. And we're going to take you through from impact, through when the club lines up, to when it starts to point back at the body. And just show you how quickly it happens for these players. So our first golfer here, again, big hitter over 120 miles an hour. He lines up the club right here when it's about level with the heel on his front foot there. And then as he moves on through, you're going to see right around here. So right around that, just past that 5 o'clock, he's now got the club pointing back to the middle of his body. And you say, like, the hands don't travel much during this time. Mm -mm. That's where you see that deceleration in the, in the hand speed graph that we always look exactly at, right. too. Now we've got a major champion in the group here. He lines it up right there around the heel of his front foot, and then he's going to get it pointing back. So just shy of 5 o'clock, or just past 5 o'clock, however you want to look at it. And we got our next player. Very long hitter. Lines it up kind of midfoot. He's going to take him on through. You can see the deflection in the shaft for where these balls are actually hitting the mat, taking the divot, right? Yeah. Golf shafts are not stiff pieces of yeah. steel. They have a lot of movement in them. And again, we're looking right at that five o'clock. And again, we got another long hitter who's a winner out there on tour. And again, I mean, these would line up even sooner without the divot, right? You have to think right, about that. Right. Yeah, so when you guys are rehearsing these kind of through swings, we see golfers all the time, you know, travel the hands more than the club head travels. These great players are doing the opposite. The club head's actually doing the traveling. The hands are not traveling nearly as much. Another 5 o'clock guy, and we got another winner here. You can see how quickly that lines up right after impact. There's no hold here. There's zero hold in these releases. Club face starting to rotate over. You see a lot yep. of golfers trying to hold that face off. You just you have to kind of freewheel these releases. It just does not exist. And here's another cup player, multiple winner, takes it through, lines it up very quickly out there and back. Again, just on the inside of his front foot. And then my guess would be he's going to be pretty much lined up. At five or right around, or in this case, just short really? of five o'clock. Yeah. I'll show you a couple more. And we wanted to show you guys, these are all, none of these guys would look the same golf swings if you just watched them, right? If you're watching them on the range, they all have their unique swing. But this is a part of the golf swing that great players have in common. And it's, you know, you hear all the time that there's a million ways to swing it, and, and there's not really a million ways to do it. These great players do certain things in their swings very, very similarly because they all have to play these same tough conditions. And this is how you get the ball airborne quickly. This is how you bring the ball steeply down to stop it on these firm greens. And this is how you add a lot of speed to your swing. Now this player here, we're going to pause this video right here. So this player that we're looking at, this last player is the fastest player that we've captured on gears. He's uh, over 130 mile an hour of club head speed. And he lines it up quicker or as quick as anyone, and then gets it pointing back at him quicker than anyone. Yeah, he's not holding any. And he's thing. not, and again, this is the fastest player we've captured. He's not holding any angles. You see how little travel 
his hands went from impact to where it's pointing back at him. And this is not what we see the typical golfer trying to do. Or rehearse. That's exactly right. All right, so now let's let's look at, so these are the long hitters. Now let's come back, and we're going to show you a group of ball strikers. Like, these guys are known to have the reputation statistically and by just sheer reputation of being some of the most accurate, most deadly ball just strikers. Solid. Yeah, just always at the flagstick out there on tour. All right, our first golfer here is, again, great ball striker, multiple winner, another cup team player. Again, so already we're seeing very similar lineups as what we saw in some of the longest centers in the game. And then we'll see where he lines it up at coming through impact. So right around that 5 o'clock again. And if you are uh, hedging bets, you're going to pretty much see – all these guys doing very <laughs> yeah, similar. It's a good, pretty monotonous. Yes, <laughs> they, they, they really there isn't a lot of ways to do it. Hit the ball high and far. That's exactly Especially right. Down you're, in this part of the swing. You're not going to do it by having the hands way out past the leg <laughs> no. and the club head way back by your rear foot. It's just not going to happen. Another inside the front foot. We've actually played a good bit of golf with this golfer and. If, if you've never had the fortune of either standing next to these guys when they're playing or on the range close to them, to really appreciate how high they hit the ball. Crazy. Right? The modern equipment, you go farther when you go high, mm -hmm. right? But you need that descending angle, that steep descending angle to stop it on some of these greens, especially with the longer clubs. Yeah, the, the angle the ball's coming in needs right. to be descending at a certain angle to stop. And these are all seven irons we're showing. These are not uh, four irons or pitching wedges. These are all seven irons. These are middle of the bag. There's another uh, major champion here. This guy is a super lagger. His calling card is his lag. You can see how quickly he lines up inside the foot. And then we'll see where he points it back at him. Right through here again, five o'clock. I, so I needed this video. A long so we time got guys. <laughs> that would have saved you a few years, yeah, wouldn't it? Back in the day. So you're seeing guys who mega laggers, right? Super laggers. Everyone that is posted on Instagram and YouTube as being, you know, I want to lag it like this guy. And then you're seeing guys who don't hardly lag it at all. They all line it up by that front foot, somewhere inside that front foot, and they all have these club shafts pointing back at their torso, middle of their torso in, in the case here, uh, by around that five o'clock on the clock face. Another super lagger here. And the hands just do not travel much. Notice too, no holding off of the club face, just continues to kind of rotate around, right? Yeah, it's a free release. Another big lagger. Pretty similar movements here. And we've got, this is only, I think, 16, 17 players from the database. I mean, we could show you 50 more. Yeah. I'd do the same thing. It would just be extremely monotonous after that point. <laughs> I think but, you get the point. Right. So <laughs> hopefully, whether you're trying to hit the ball farther, where you're trying to hit the ball straighter, like what you saw Phil doing at the beginning of this video, what you saw the rest of these great players do. Again, you've got long hitters. Really long hitters, you've got straight hitters, really straight hitters. Come guys that compress it, really lean it. No matter the look they have at address, they're all lining it up by the time the club gets to that front foot. And then the club head is passing the hands and pointing back at the body very quickly after that. So if you're looking at a clock face, somewhere around that 5 o'clock. I think what's interesting about that, too, is when you're letting those angles out, you're able to square the face without having to add a lot of like a lot of twist to the right. grip, which really, to me, keeps the face a little more stable. That's exactly right. You're not having to flash that thing closed in there with the handle way forward. And this was uh, something that we were helping Ryan with in that, that last live lesson. And we've since saw him, I think it was last week, he came back in for another lesson. And the change that he was able to make between the lesson that you guys saw and his last lesson was pretty phenomenal. His speed's gone up. His, his swing has gotten better. He said he's hitting more greens, hitting it closer. He's a happy camper, and 
it's really learning the culmination of everything that we showed him in that lesson was to teach him how to better do this. Because this is kind of what the ball sees right here. Everything else is to help you get in position to do this. And if we pull up Phil's swing, let's go back to that. So you mentioned something about Phil's body when we were looking at this. You said he's lining up the body, right? And if you look right here, and we talk about this all the time with the recentering and the movement left. So we just put a wall out here in front of his hip. He's got himself on that wall very early, then it's stable. There's no late push off or shove forward in the golf swing, right? That's the whole benefit of recentering early is it allows you to do the stuff that you're seeing in this video with the hands and club because he stabilized himself to really now deliver the club. He's got his shoulder up there. He's got his left hip on that, or his right hip actually, on that wall. Now it's all that's left to do is just deliver the club and you get this great kind of really Hall of Fame type release. And um, if you want to hit the ball longer and straighter and you want to compete in whatever is your major at home, yeah, right? Start adopting these ideas. Start adopting these elements to your swing that these great players use. If you want to see higher, more towering iron shots, if you want to hit the ball longer with driver, this applies to the driver as well. It's just a better way to train yourself. Every one of these you give yourself in practice Right, you're kind of defeating the purpose of having this in your golf swing. So make sure you're practicing with the right ideas and the right intent. And I think you'll start to see more of these type of impact alignments and lineups much sooner in your golf swing. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you want to add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're going to see a link. Click on it. It's going to take you to a page. You're going to enter your name and email address. We're going to send you an email where you're going to get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's going to help you. We know we're going to see you farther down the fairway.